10 Studios. This is K10 News at 10. Right now on K10 News at 10, wheel scary. A man is run over while working inside, not by a vehicle, just a wheel. We'll show you how the freak accident happened. Plus, saving Leon, how a homeless man's mugshots touch the hearts of a group of Texomans and help get a roof over his head. And abduction arrest. All they told me was that the child had been kidnapped from Arkansas. A two-year-old child is headed back home after an Amber Alert tips off local authorities to his kidnapper. K10 News at 10 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Meredith Saldana. Welcome to K10 News at 10. And I'm Tom Crespo. An Amber Alert was canceled when police in Atoka found the missing toddler safe and sound. Well, tonight police are crediting a watchful driver with helping find the two-year-old. Police made this stop near the Pizza Hut on Highway 6975 after someone who'd seen the alert recognized the alleged kidnapper's car and called 911. K10's Alex Belzer he is live in the studio now with more. Alex? Tom, police soon found the child was safe. Hours after police in Arkansas say the man had a fight with the boy's mother around 3 a.m., then left. More than 200 miles away, the journey ended with an arrest. I seen Chief Dotson had the suspect stop and had him on hand, had him in handcuffs. Police say the ride for two-year-old Alex Almodovar of Rogers, Arkansas, and his mother's boyfriend, 30-year-old Brent Wilkes, in a BMW like this one, ended with flashing lights in his rearview mirror around 2:30, summoned by an alert driver's phone call from Pittsburgh County. They were southbound. Somebody driving called it in on their cell phone. And I saw the officers with the man outside of the car. And then one of my customers said that there was a child in the car. At Pizza Hut on Highway 6975, an employee heard sirens and went out to the parking lot to try to help. They told me that no DHS was on the way. But he was, the child was so upset that I just went ahead and took him a couple of slices of pizza and it's brought out. The child was fine, happy, healthy. No problems. The Amber Alert was then canceled and Wilkes was brought here to the Atoka County Jail while awaiting transfer back to Arkansas. It was like two cops parked at Pizza Hut. There may have been more, but that was all I seen. They didn't have lots on or anything. Alma Dobar was taken into emergency DHS custody to be reunited with his mother in Arkansas. Police say Wilkes claimed to be on the way to Plano. We have so much traffic on 69. Mm -hmm. So unless you are very observant, you miss, there's a lot of things missed on the highway. It would have been away. easy for them to just keep going down this highway and probably never would have been found. It, it worked out real. It, it turned out really good. The child was, like I said, was really healthy. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't. Police say Officer Michael Brewer and a Homeland Security agent, David Harrison, who just happened to be driving by, were also at the scene. Police in Arkansas say Wilkes is facing charges of kidnapping, domestic battery, fleeing, and terroristic threat. They have just arrived in Atoka. Live in the studio, Alex Belzer, K10 News. An inmate in the Carter County Jail is now in the hospital, and a deputy is on leave after investigators say they struggled with the deputy's gun. The OSBI says Dustin Bacon was shot after he took the gun out of the deputy's holster. It happened when Bacon was being transported back to jail from Mercy Hospital Tuesday night. While he was driving, the deputy reached back to take the firearm back when agents say the gun went off. OSBI says Bacon was hit on his right side. Sheriff Milton Anthony says the deputy is on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Police in Lone Grove are trying to figure out what caused a fiery crash that left a man dead last night. It happened just before 11 o'clock on Prairie Valley Road, about a half mile west of Newport Road. Police say the man's SUV burst into flames after he slammed into a tree. 36-year-old Jarrett Marshall was killed after being pinned inside his vehicle. Police say several people passing by tried unsuccessfully to get him out before the fire started. Marshall worked at Two Frogs Grill in Ardmore and had just been married earlier that day. Just losing a family member is, they're family members, it's just like, uh, you know, we see each other every day. We Sometimes we see our employees more than we see our family, you know, and well, which makes it, you know, the frog family. Chief Robert Oldham says a preliminary investigation shows alcohol and speed may have led to the crash. A Texoma school district is installing new security measures while students are away during the holidays. K-10's Rebecca Lex shows us what they're doing. 
Monday, the Gainesville Independent School District approved almost a $40,000 door station intercom system. Superintendent Jeff Brasher says the system won't replace the current security cameras, but will ensure the safety of students. Well, we want to be proactive and make sure that our schools are, are safe, uh, positive, and nurturing for our faculty, our staff, and students. This is a two-part security system. Dr. Brasher says the first part will be placed outside, and it has a camera in it. The second part is a touch screen with a phone that will be in the secretary's office. When a guest approaches the locked school doors, the screen will show who the guest is. I'm excited about the system. To add another level of security I think is always fabulous for everybody involved. Principal Mary Patterson says it will give parents another sense of security for their children. Every time you can do that for parents, that gets them the opportunity to go about their work day without having to worry about their children. Family members say they are also excited about the new system. If it's going to keep the bad people out of the schools, you know, where they can see who comes into the schools, it's a good thing. You can actually see whoever comes in, who's going out, a um, lot better security. It's always a good idea. Four Feather Alarm Company will install the security system this month. I'm outside of the Gainesville High School and this is just one of the five campuses that will be getting a new security system over Christmas break. The admin and disciplinary buildings will also be getting the new security system. Reporting in Gainesville, I'm Rebecca Lex. The Gainesville ISD says they haven't had any recent problems with security, but they always want to be prepared for anything. And turning to weather, it's turned out to be a pretty nice night across the area after a very cold, dreary day. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Alan Mitchell with the Weather Center with a quick look at the forecast. Alan? Yeah, temperature's not doing too bad, but we are starting to see areas of fog form across the region. Visibility is down to about a half a mile in uh, many locations. We'll have the drizzle and fog overnight, but uh, we stay well above freezing, so that's always a big plus, of course. The weather system coming in, that will be uh, increasing our rain chances, albeit light overnight, and tomorrow we'll, we'll be exiting by tomorrow evening. Looks like we might actually have a little sunshine this weekend. Your complete forecast, including Christmas Day, in just a few minutes. A man in Ardmore has developed what some call a cult following. His name is Leon. He's homeless. And as Meredith Yeomans shows us, his popularity online is translating into a real-life makeover. Heaven. It may be the most unusual way anyone has fallen on good fortune, but seeing mug shots of Leon Maynard is what compelled many in Ardmore to help. And just a smile, you know, he just... I can't even explain it. It just, he just touched all of us. The mugshots began popping up again and again on a Facebook page of Carter County inmates. Under one, a woman commented, quote, I wonder if this guy knows he has somewhat of a cult following. At the time, probably not. Better than 10 years. That's how long Maynard says he's been homeless. I wake up a lot of times whenever in the morning, stuff like that. I'm bewildered. I'll say my prayers. I don't know what's going to happen next. All I can do is put one foot in front of the other. But now he has a roof over his head and is getting accustomed to amenities most take for granted. Pretty neat. His own bathroom, clean clothes, food, and a bed in a motel room all paid for by community donations. Evidently <laughs> somebody out there smiling on me. The donations began last month after five women started an online account and a Facebook page called Saving Leon. And everybody wanted to help and it was awesome seeing the whole community, you know, come together as one. Everybody, you know, food, clothes. But that's just the beginning. Here. An optometrist gave Maynard eyeglasses. Oh, there you are. Soon he'll be seeing a new set of donated dentures, too. That's me. The group has also helped Maynard get an identification card, something he hasn't had in years. He has a part-time job now as well. You know, everyone was like, oh, he's homeless, just tell him to get a job. Well, you can't just go get a job when you don't have an ID, you don't have clean clothes, you don't have transportation. Even though things are looking up, the battle to stay off the streets and out of jail isn't over. This past Friday, Maynard was arrested again for public intoxication. In fact, since July, he's been booked into jail 34 times, mostly for public intoxication. Maynard admits. He has an alcohol yeah, problem. I call it my pain medicine. But now the women are helping him get screened so he can enter rehab. There's a lot of red tape with that, and 
that's something that maybe needs to be worked on because it's been a struggle for us five together to try to get him there. In the meantime, Maynard says he's grateful for the gifts and donations he's received. I had landed right in my lap and I didn't even see it coming. In a way, he may already be paying it forward. With all the blessings that we've been receiving for Leon, um, we've been able to give coats to some that are on the streets, um, coveralls for one. Proof that a smile really can make a difference. In Ardmore, Meredith Yeomans, K10 News. The Saving Leon Group is raising money through t-shirt and necklace sales. You can find a link to more information on our website, k10.com. Still ahead, thieves rob a big box store after one of the crooks fakes a heart attack. We'll show you why their plan didn't work. Plus, where you need to be tomorrow night to hear some good tunes and help raise money for a worthy cause. And Alan's back with a full forecast when K10 News at 10 returns. K10 News at 10 with Tom Crespo, Meredith Saldana, Sports with Chase Shannon, and Chief Meteorologist Alan Mitchell with the weather. Well, tomorrow will make the third day in a row that we've had nothing but clouds and some drizzle and fog across the area. But finally, I think there's some light at the end of the tunnel. By Saturday, we should be looking at a little bit of sunlight anyway by that time. Starting to see some fog develop across the area this evening, as is evident by the tower cameras kind of in the clouds. And as we look southward bound, our Dr. Jack Thomas tower camera and uh, a little bit of fog forming out there right now. Visibility is about uh, four miles here locally, but uh, just across the river in uh, Durant, uh, you're down to about a half a mile, so it varies quite a bit around the area. Now, our rain chances will be going up overnight tonight and into tomorrow. This is not very heavy rainfall, but an upper storm system that was out on the California coast yesterday continues to move eastward. By tomorrow afternoon, it'll be setting over our Texoma region. Once we get on the back side of it and it gets east of here, then uh, some drier air will come in with the system and we'll start to see clouds break up just a little bit. And all, all in all, a pretty good weather pattern change for us from what we've had uh, the last few days. Anyway, fog like we did the other morning where visibilities were near zero, but certainly a half mile to about a mile, uh, not out of the question for us. Quite a bit of cloudiness beginning to roll its way in in the mid and upper levels ahead of that storm system. Once again, as it uh, scoots on by, we'll start to see things begin to clear out, but not tomorrow. A little bit of light rain, mist and drizzle across the area, and then by Friday night and into Saturday, we start to see the clouds thin a little bit. As a matter of fact, by Saturday afternoon, we'll be looking at uh, partly cloudy skies across the area and about the same thing again on Sunday, too. As far as temperatures go, again, in the morning, close to where we are right now, about 40 to 43 across much of the region. And then tomorrow afternoon, well, we only climb about 5 degrees in most locations, so not a significant uh, change in our temperatures with all the cloud cover and the drizzle and the fog and the mist. That'll be changing, though, a little bit. But as you can see by Saturday, we'll get up to around 50 degrees. Nice thing about it, we stay well above freezing for the next seven days and not much in the way of any precipitation either. We'll go about 60 on Monday before our front arrives and it just cools us down a little bit. No drastic changes. Uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day look quite nice for us. I do see some perhaps much colder air coming in the day after Christmas, however. So no snow, maybe a bright Christmas. I, that's a good way to put <laughs> like it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Well, still to come, class ends early after a school gets a threatening message. And how a local restaurant plans to use music to raise money for a Texoma children's shelter. An Ardmore restaurant is trying to raise money for a good cause. Tomorrow night, they will be hosting a concert to benefit the community children's shelter. Aubrey Harris, owner of Two Frogs Grill, says a previous concert raised more than $1,000 for the children's shelter, but they hope to raise even more money tomorrow night. Directors at the shelter say they've received an outpouring of support from community businesses across Ardmore during the last few weeks. Um, honestly, we haven't even asked for the help. People have just come knocking on our door asking to, you know, be able to partner with us and help us. And it makes us feel like what we're doing is the right thing. Managers at Two Frogs say the concert with Brett Michaels still has some tickets available. It will be held tomorrow night at Two Frogs and starts at 8. The Durant Police Department made Christmas possible for 127 boys and girls this morning. The 6th Annual Shop with a Cop helped about twice as many kids than it did last year, about 47 families in all. The department raised more than $12,000 for the kids to go pick out their Christmas gifts. 
we give them a card that tells them how much money they have to spend. Some of these officers are going above and beyond the, the card that we've raised and pulling out of their pocket to help because they see the need right there. About 100 people volunteered to help wrap the gifts and take pictures with Santa. The department accepts donations and nominations for kids all year round. If you'd like to do either, all you have to do is send a letter or check to the Durant Police Department. Still ahead, a runaway tire wreaks havoc after it comes off a truck at high speed and it's all caught on tape. And the Dallas Mavericks pull off a blockbuster deal and bring a four-time All-Star to D-Town. That's later in sports. It was a frightening ordeal for a North Carolina teenage boy and his grandmother when a pair of intruders tried to break into their house. The grandmother says she's glad the boy had a gun and wasn't afraid to use it. That story tops tonight's Pinpointing the Nation. Police say the 14-year-old boy shot and killed a would-be burglar as he was trying to break into the house. He's coming through the window and, and my grandson says, stop, I got a gun. Stop! Stop! The hand kept coming through. So. That's when the teen pulled the trigger. A second guy managed to get away, but police caught up to him. Police records show the brothers have broken into the same house twice before. Police in Florida say a pair of thieves made off with a cart full of toys after pulling one of the oldest tricks in the book, the fake heart attack. After a heart attack, what's, what's next? It's incredible. I don't know. They must just sit in spend hours thinking of these diversions and the things that they can do to get over on other people. The thieves left the store with about $400 in toys, but they didn't get far. A store security guard followed them out and held them until police arrived. We have now welcomed them to the county jail for a very Merry Christmas. Students at a school in Maine got an unexpected three-day vacation after administrators received some threatening emails. The school was evacuated Monday, but it took two days for the State Police Computer Crimes Task Force to identify a suspect. We feel very fortunate that we were able to uh, bring this to a quick conclusion. Frankly, I wasn't certain it was going to go this quickly. Police say they arrested the 16-year-old boy who sent the messages. He's charged with making terroristic threats. And finally, it was a close call for a man in Houston when he was run over by a speeding tire. You heard right, just a tire, and it happened when he was inside at work. The tire apparently came off a truck traveling down the freeway and crashed through the wall where the man was working. All he remembers is like an, sort of like an explosion when a tank explodes and um, the, the tire in his face. Remarkably, the man wasn't seriously hurt, just cuts and bruises, but no broken bones or internal damage. And that's tonight's Pinpointing the Nation. Coming up next in sports, Thursday night hoops and highlights, plus the Atoka Wampus Cats get invited to one of the most prestigious holiday tournaments in the country. Hear from them later in sports. Now sports with Chase Shannon. It's been a three and a half year process for the Dallas Mavericks after winning the 2011 title, letting the key pieces walk and spending three summers trying to get back into contention. They finally assembled a cast that looks good enough to be the last team standing in June. That's all thanks to Rajon Rondo. According to multiple reports, the deal is done. The four-time All-Star point guard is shipping down from Boston in exchange for Brandon Wright, Jay Crowder, Jameer Nelson, and two draft picks. Dallas now adds a former NBA champion to join Monte Ellis, Chandler Parsons, Dirk Nowitzki, and Tyson Chandler as the starting five. Get ready for a throwdown Saturday against the defending champion San Antonio Spurs. Two Western Conference heavyweights throwing down tonight on the West Coast. Oklahoma City gunning for an eighth win in a row. They trail it right now in the second quarter, 52-48. Last spring, the Atoka Wampus Cat basketball team would find themselves in the state tournament for the first time in 25 years. A three-point loss to the eventual runner-ups would knock them out, but now they're reloaded and gunning for gold. A hot start has them ranked number two in all of Class 3A. They've also been invited to play in one of the most prestigious tournaments in the country this holiday break. They hope the competition they face at the Tournament of Champions can battle test them in the grind of the season. It's going to be the 50th anniversary, the oldest invitational tournament in Oklahoma for boys. Um, we're going to play number two in 5A, Tulsa Memorial. These guys are excited. Our community's excited. Our school's excited. To see all those big teams up there and we get a chance to play against them and possibly upset them, it just is, it's a great feeling. I mean, it's the first time we've been invited. It's the 50th one. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's big. We get a lot of competition. Let's see what we can do up there. That tournament will tip off a week from next Monday. Some Thursday night hoops as winter break starts tomorrow. Bennington and Coleman taking on the Wildcats. It's the Bears out in Roaring first. Check out Cameron Hammond, the post up, the fadeaway, the bucket. He's not done either. Here he is making a beautiful feed, but his teammate can't finish. He comes up with a rebound and adds a couple more points to his scoring total. Coleman would answer, though. A corner three here is up and good from Damon Horath. They do it just again before the buzzer and beat Bennington by just a point, 50 to 49. Class 2A's number eight, Caddo Lady Bruins. They would host cross county rival Colbert, and the Lady Bruins, they'd be scorching in the third quarter. Desiree Hagen with the post entry pass. She takes it and finishes off the glass to keep them in front. Here's Allison Adair. Check her out with the pump fake, taking baseline. She's up and in with a right handed bucket. And then right before the half, they're trying to beat the buzzer. They'll heave one up from three here, miss it, but Taylor Barrett's there for the backside rebound, and she finishes just before the break. You can hear the buzzer there. The Cato rolls 68 to 49. It's state championship Thursday for Texas high school football. Unfortunately, no area teams making it to AT&T Stadium this year. Instead, the coaching carousel continues to spin as the Tom right Bean Tomcats stay. are in the market for a new head coach and athletic director. Alan Cross has been reassigned after going 7-13 and 13 in his two years at the helm. The school district says they'll close the posting January 9th. And speaking of state championships, Mineola, the team that barely got by Pottsboro in the quarterfinals, is taking on Cameron Yo as we speak. The Yo men, they're a pretty solid club. They're already at 42-13.5. to 13 and, a half. and then check out Division II. Wascom, the team that would knock out Leonard, Howe, and Gunner, they roll to the title 41 to 22 over Newton. So Mineola is down big at half. That has to make Pottsboro fans feel a little bit better. That was a heartbreaking game they lost there. And the Yeoman is their mascot. You think our reporter Meredith Yeomans would like that? Maybe we should get her a Cameron Yeoman uh, shirt. She's our mascot. She's sure. our yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Hayden. All right, Alan. And colder temperatures continue. Yes, they do. Uh, we do expect to see a little bit of improvement once we get through tomorrow. You may recall on Tuesday I said that'll be the last day we see any sun for the rest of the week until the weekend. Well, that's still the plan anyway. Some light rain tomorrow. It won't be much. Uh, a few hundreds, less than a tenth of an inch. But then you can see we start to improve. And really, the first day of winter on Sunday uh, isn't uh, all that terrible. As a matter of fact, uh, as you can see, we stay well above freezing through Christmas. I do think that there could be a much stronger front end the day after Christmas. Uh, it looks like a dry one, but it will be turning us somewhat colder for the Christmas weekend. At least it'll feel like Christmas. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, thanks, Alan. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.